Matching into residency is possible. What's up guys? My name is Dr. Safo Asante. I'm the successful IMG. Successful because I matched and I'm here so that you can as well. I haven't made a video in a while. I figured I'd drop a video for you guys. And there's some things that I needed to say to the people that matched into residency this season. To all my students that match into residency, listen, I'm very proud of you. You worked hard. I guided you a little bit, but the work was all on you. You did it and you matched into the residency, into the specialty of your choice. Well done. <laughs> Getting into residency is difficult, but it is possible. Today in this video, we will talk about the five limits and beliefs that I, from my perspective, not from any data that's been collected and compiled and analyzed, just my perspective. The five things that I think applicants to residency have that are holding them back and preventing them from matching. That's what we're going to talk about today. So, first of all, what's residency? Residency is a place where you go and do training so that you get the ability to take care of people without supervision. It's basically a training program you go through so that you can, you can become an unsupervised practitioner provider in the United States of America. That is the only way you can become a physician practicing your own. The only way in the US. And that's why getting into residency is so important. So you can go to medical school, you can be the best in your high school, you can be the best in your college, you can be the best in your medical school. If you don't get into residency, you can't practice as a physician in the US. So that's why it's, it's, so, it's so important. Now, you have different people that are applying, you have the US medical graduates, the doctors from the US that are applying to residency. You also have people that went to school outside of the US. Some of them are US citizens, some of them are US residents, some of them they are applying. And also you also have people that uh, have nothing to do with the US. They grew up in a different country, they went to school in their own country, and they decided at some point in their lives they want to come to the US to come and practice. So a lot of people are applying. And as a result, getting into residency is extremely competitive. A lot of people don't match into residency, not because they're not going to be good physicians, or not because they're not good people, or not because they're not smart, but because there are a lot of people applying for fewer spots. So I took a quick glance at um, the statistics from 2022, the people that got in 2022. About 47,000 people registered to for the match and only about 36,000 people were accepted into PGY1 positions. There are 39,000 positions in total available. Some of these positions went unfilled and then eventually through the soap and whatever means, they ended up being filled. But there are 39 positions in total available and there are 47,000 people that are applying. So that's about 8,000 people instantly that are not going to make it. Doesn't, doesn't matter if you're good, doesn't matter if you're not good, if you're just that person, then that's you. If you know my story, you know that I applied to residency three times. I made it on the third time. Uh, that after the first two times, I worked on myself, I made myself a better applicant, and I applied again. And this time I saw on the faces of the program directors, they told me specifically, blah, 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 that they were interested in me. So I knew I was gonna match. I ended up matching, which was a blessing. I was so excited. And <laughs> finally, when I was done with residency, I decided that I was going to give back to people that apply for the match to help them also succeed in overcoming the match. Because there is a method to the madness. It's not just all luck, right? Now, 
when I was applying, there was something that I liked about people. And that was, they had certain limiting beliefs. Even though, if you looked at them on paper, they were much better applicants than I was. But these limiting beliefs held them back. Let me give you an example. Growing up, I loved a bunch of things. I loved playing soccer. I loved, uh, well, I loved everything soccer. I loved to read. I loved martial arts, so on. There's also a video game that I used to love playing, which was FIFA. Some of you might know what FIFA is, some of you might not. I would play with people that were better than me, but I would win. Not necessarily because I was more talented, not because I knew more things, but because I knew some of their beliefs, I knew the things that held them back, and those were their limited beliefs. There was a person that I would play against, and he would give up instantly if I scored two goals, because, oh, it's too much to, to catch up after two goals which is not true because he was way better than me. If he pushed hard to the end, he probably would have scored those two goals and scored an extra goal to win. So my process was to make sure I scored two goals as quickly as possible, demoralize him, and then I'll end up winning the game. Now, that's when you're competing against someone. So for me, it benefited me because he had that limited belief. So he was not as competitive as I was and it made it easier for me to beat him even though he was better than me. Same scenario in residency. People that don't have that drive, people that don't believe that they can do it, or they have these limiting beliefs, shoot themselves in the foot and make it easier for other people that are trying really hard and working hard to make it into residency ahead of them. People with better scores, people with better um, uh, US clinical experiences, better letters of recommendations, whatever, whatever have you. If they have these limiting beliefs, they, I sometimes get beat out by people that are not as good as them. So what are these limiting beliefs? So let's talk about it. the five limiting beliefs that people have that prevent them from making it into residency or prevent them from being competitive in applying to residency. Ah, uh, without further ado, number one, they try to do everything on their own. Now, as physicians, from whatever country you come from, you were in the top one percent, two percent, top one percent, two percent, three percent, five percent, whatever. You're the top. You're in the top echelon when it comes to how intelligent you are, which is true. However, because we believe we're so intelligent, we try to do everything on our own. And there's some people that apply for residency and they try to do everything on their own. You write their era statement on their own. They do the personal statement on their own. They practice for interviews on their own and um, they end up not matching and wonder why, right? They're not doing everything that they can to make sure that the application is the best that it can be. I've reviewed a whole bunch of ERAS applications. I've reviewed a whole bunch of personal statements. Now, I'll be honest with you, some of these ERAS applications, not all of them, some of them are trash. I'm not even gonna beat around the bush. <laughs> They're trash, and then they apply. And this is like the second, third, fourth time that they've applied. They've applied second, third, or fourth time that they have applied, and I'm reading this thing, and I can't make heads or tails of it. So if I'm reading it and I can't make heads or tails of it, imagine if the program that they're applying to is reading it. It's very easy to read you out. There are people out there that have been through what you've been through. There are people out there that know what to do. You speak to them. You figure out what you need to do by getting advice from them. How do you do this? There are forums out there. You speak to your family that's gotten in. You speak to your friends that gotten in. You speak to advisors that are already physicians that are practicing. And they can help you. Now, if things are extremely difficult and you're banging your head against the, the wall, there are also services out there where they help you. My service is the only one I'm going to talk about. My service. I mentor you and I also help you with interview prep. So if you're able to get interviews on your own, you have no issues with that, fine. Just call me for interview prep and I'll guide you and make you the best applicant that you can be. If you cannot get your interviews and so on, then you need to sign up with me early for a mentorship program and we'll work together to try to make sure that you match by increasing your chances. You have things around you that can help you. Use them. You're gonna work on your own, it's fine, but you have to make sure that you work extremely hard. 
So that's the first thing. Right? They think you want to do everything on their own. They do the personal statement on their own, the EOS application on their own, and they also practice for the interviews on their own. The second thing is they think that they can match without any US clinical experiences, man. Listen, there are specific things that everybody knows that you need to handle before you apply for the match. Just do them. Stop beating them on the bush. You waste the money. Each application season will cost you upwards of three thousand, four thousand, five thousand dollars. If you apply five times, it's fifteen thousand dollars, man. Get everything done. But get everything done the right way from the get go. If you need to spend money, spend the money. That would save you that reapplication time because the reapplication time and fees gets even more expensive. Third thing, they think that matching is all about scores. Yes, you. I'm sure you watching this right now, you probably think matching to residency is all about scores. All I gotta do is score 240, 250, 260, and boom, I'm in. It doesn't work like that. There are a lot of people that I see that didn't match and they have. 240s, 250s, 230s. But of course, you also see 220s, 201s, whatever. It's people that uh, have uh, scores closer to just the passing rate. They, they have low scores. Now, the people that have low scores think that I didn't match just because of my low score. Sure, the low score made it more difficult for you to match. But that is not an excuse. You can still match with low scores. You can still match with a failure. I had my step two CS exam that I failed due to not taking it serious and not planning right, I ended up failing it, but I passed it the next time and I still got into residency. It was more difficult for me than the person that had everything all smooth, but I still matched into residency. It's possible. Not saying it's easy, but it's possible. Number four, year of graduation. People think that if you graduated longer than five years ago or three years ago, or four years ago, whatever it is, the further along that you graduated, that it's unlikely that you're gonna match. Sure, it makes it difficult. I'm not minimizing that. It does make it difficult. But at the same time, there are a lot of people that match with long year of graduations, 10 year of graduations, 15 year of graduation, whatever it is. Now, I'm not saying it's easy. You might have to apply once, you might have to apply twice, tweak some things here and there, fix some things here and there. But it's possible to match. If you have red flags, you gotta make sure that you put some time aside to make sure that you get everything done. And of course, if you're beating your head against the wall and you're not knowing what kinds of things you need to switch, you can always talk to me. Shoot me an email, uh, contact me. All right, my, my contact information should be at the bottom of the information page on my YouTube channel. I just need you to hit the like button. That's what you need to do. I forgot to ask you guys to do that. Hit the like button below. That's another limiting beliefs. You don't believe in hitting the like button. And that's preventing you from matching. That's a joke. But seriously though, hit the like button for me. Well, I'm going to pause. Beautiful. Now they've hit the like button. Let's continue. I have an Instagram page. I have a Facebook page. I have a YouTube page. Send me a message if you got any questions. We try, I'll try to see what I can do to help you. If you're interested in my mentorship program, if you're interested in my interview prep program, send me an email, contact me, shoot me a message, whatever it is, and I'll get back to you. Limiting belief number five, Cinco. Limiting belief number five is, and wait, hold on, before I even go on. This limiting belief applies to you. I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure that you watching this, just you. Because <laughs> I say this because almost everybody believes this. Everybody believes this. Limiting belief number five is that you need to know somebody in the program to match, especially if you have red flags. right? You need to know somebody in the program that's going to help you match. There are a lot of people that apply without, without matching to residency, without knowing anybody in the program. There are a lot of people. Now, am I saying that that does not help? It does help. It does make it a little bit easier sometimes. However, it's not the end all be all. You can match without knowing somebody in the residency program. Those are the five limiting beliefs I've noticed that people have that I enjoyed when they had it when I was applying. Now that I finished applying, I'm no longer in competition with any of you guys. I want you guys to be aware of this so that you can work on it. For those of you that have not hit the like button, you, yes, you, make sure you hit the like button. Pleasure. I, I will try to make videos a little bit more often. 
I will try, but I'm super busy working. I've been working like crazy. For those of you who want mentorship, contact me. Let's get you into residency. Dr. Safo Asante, out.